Breathe for me. I don't know, is that fair? Yeah, so pretty much most of us' uh, favorite track is Breathe on the album. I, I like Jupiter in June because I'm on it. <laughs> and 155 because it's the new single. One thing I've heard about you guys from some of the fans is you're a little bit younger band, but you got that cool 80s sound, but you're doing it in a better way. You guys are, you know, it's 2001, you took the best from the old, and you put your own spin on it. As one of your fans, I just want to say thank you, but kind of what are your influences, and how did you guys get this kick-ass sound? I think a lot of it, too, is just like, you know, um, we didn't really try to create a certain specific sound. We just, you know, we all kind of just were who we are and uh, just play the way that we play. And the, the, that's just kind of the way that it comes through when we're all together, you know? That's just, that's the sound that we get. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about it. I, I think we really let, like a lot of our influences, like, uh, you know, growing up and stuff, in fact, the way that we write our music, instead of like a lot of the stuff that's on the radio today, kind of hitting it, like there's a lot of classic rock that you can hear there. Um, you know, just different influences from everyone with kind of like, more of our twist on it, so I think that's where a lot of people get that, you know, the old vibe with a lot of guitar solos and just cool rock yeah. and roll riffs, you know? Kind of comes from our Guns N' Roses pants here and <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Big GNR fan. And then, then, of course, we've got a little bit of a Detroit vibe with our new, new edition. Yep, yeah, DJ, DJ. DJ. Just started out on doing a little of backup vocals. DJ and the band added to the band and the new guy, so... Be looking out for me in the pictures coming soon. <laughs> hey, I got great news. Chinese Democracy is going to drop November 23rd. Finally. Finally. I read that. Sure. I read it uh, yeah, yesterday. Is that for sure, though? Is that he, so? No, they're talking. You better not be it's, lying to us. I, it's, it's on the web. We've been waiting they, for it for 15 years. I know, so have I. Yeah. <laughs> Only thing is, I've seen Axel, or Guns N' Roses, sorry. Yeah. That All this stuff sounds great, but you, I never heard it before. It was kind of hard to get into that. Okay, what's he playing now? Yeah. But um, let's see. So you know a little bit about your musical influences. Where are you guys playing next? And um, I know tonight we're at the Myth in Maplewood. Um, tell us about the rest of the tour and how's the tour gone so far? Well, we're going to be doing a lot of East Coast and sort of Midwest stuff. Um, and then uh, I think towards the end of the month we'll be like up in the Northeast. And then we'll work our way down like towards Florida and all that. Um, not a whole lot of like West Coast or anything like that right now, but we're working on it for sure. The tour's been awesome though, man. Yeah. Tesla boys rock. Yeah, they're great guys, man. They're the fun. They're just good people all the way around. Man. They treat us just like we're their best friends, and they hardly even like I was intimidated to even talk to them. And gosh, they treat me like I was a guy they've known for ten years. <laughs> was good, Tesla good one of your guys' musical influences when you were? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I sure. definitely grew up with them, but they're still making good music, man. They got this new record out, just came out a couple days ago. Yeah. That's why it's so exciting, like, night after night, get to sit back and watch them, you know? Like, one of the one of the first uh, rock songs that got got me going, too, was uh, Heaven's Trail. You know, it's a classic Tesla jam. I think you guys got a good blend, because you guys, you know, you're different, but it's same style, you're all great musicians, so I think it's a good blend. What's the response from the audience has been? How many fans do you think you guys are picking up? audiences have been amazing you know to take a new band that they're not familiar with and to kind of welcome them with open arms but I think you said it best I mean like you know being from Michigan and being together for so long I mean people you know have people are more smart when they spend their you know extra money they have on entertainment they want to be entertained you know I think that like you said it best you know the, the guys our band were fortunate enough to have guys that can play and who love playing their instruments and who believe in their in, their, in our music, and the music that they write, and I think that comes out on stage every night that you'll see again tonight here at The Myth. And keep in mind, we're going on no sleep, but it doesn't matter, because we <laughs> just love doing what we do, you know? Like, even if you're tired, that's the cool thing, and the magical thing I think about, at least our band. It's like, when we're on stage, that's what we were meant to do with each other, and, and it's, it kind of comes out, you know? And, and despite all, all the differences that some, or the difference we might look differently at times, you know what I mean? It might not look like, oh wow, they're not the expected band, playing with Tesla even. I mean, I think getting back to your question, the fans and the crowds have been so amazing and open, and and and, and excited to kind of welcome us into their into their into their new repertoire of new upcoming bands. So we're excited, and we want to not let them down. We just want to rock them every night. Speaking of that, I know you guys are a diverse group. You want to tell us a little bit about each of you guys, particularly, so the fans can get a little bit more of a feel. Certainly. 
<laughs> That's what happens when you sit on the end. <laughs> no, I don't know. You know, it's like uh, background vibes. You know, it's like, you know, growing up, it's like with me and my family. I came from like uh, overseas, you know. It, grew, my dad grew up in Michigan, my mom in Turkey, you know. So I kind of was raised going back and forth with uh, kind of the best of both worlds with that, you know. And got into uh, playing guitar when I was about eight and uh, just been doing it ever since, you know, every day, just going at it and at it. Great, you gotta love it. Oh, Ted Nugent said, anything. play to your fingers bleed, then work a little harder. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Michigan boy. That's for sure. But I'm, No, I grew up, I actually grew up an athlete, you know. I wanted to play for the Lakers my whole career, but I soon realized, you know, in my college days that that probably wasn't going to happen. I didn't get as quite as tall as Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> so I, uh, I thought that I had to find something different, and you know, and I've been singing, obviously, all my life, and, and um, uh, you know, kind of right around... Uh, high school, you know, I decided that, you know, it was something that I wanted to try to explore and um, ran into some of these guys and, um, you know, you know, eight years later, here, here we are, you know, so it's kind of one of those things that, you know, you start off for fun, you start off in the garage and, and you get more serious and we like to think that you become a better writer by, you know, studying your influences. I think that the older you get as a band, the older you get, the more you, you don't just listen anymore, like you try to study other bands, what makes... Sign, the you know what makes when Tesla plays signs how, how do why do all these people sing and all these different age groups and genres why does everyone come together for that song and it's when you can understand that magic that I think that you can become a something greater and you can have those moments that we all are something greater as a unit instead of just individually great sounds like you're a student yeah. of your craft absolutely guaranteed um, for me hot seat hot seat hot seat that's right <laughs> The whole world's watching. <laughs> um, see, I was uh, born out on the West Coast in California and uh, kind of grew up in California, Arizona, that area, and then moved out to Michigan. Total geek, nerd, glasses, you know, couldn't play sports, you know, quite the opposite of this dude, man. He's very gifted in that area. I, balls are just attracted to my face. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. Can we cut that? Uh, I'll that one out. Uh, it seems like... You gotta buy me a drink, but I'll buy it at that one. <laughs> no, that's fine. You know, like, if, if it was soccer, soccer ball always hit me right in the face. Football always hit me right in the face. So, naturally, I... You can want a job, you can play for the Vikings. Yeah. True. <laughs> True. Or the Lions, for that matter. Yeah. yeah. yeah we might as well hey, now we love Michigan here. Don't don't. Oh, no, I, love, I'm, I love the Lions. That's why you know, I just keep taking it every year. You know, By the way, do you days. guys know the Vikings are playing Detroit? I believe when, Sunday. Wow. See, when you're on a tour bus, I haven't got to. We haven't got to watch one game all year. So. Okay. I was gonna say, if you guys are wrong, which I'm sure you're not. Yeah, you know what goes on outside the world. Anymore. Yeah, we don't even. I just know we fired Matt Mellon. So yes. <laughs> There's hope. <laughs> so anyway, horrible at sports. Uh, naturally, I, I became a band geek. You know, started out on saxophone and stuff like that. And uh, once I got to uh, the level of like being in high school and stuff, I uh, was introduced into jazz, and that's what really got me going. And, like I really you know, realized that music was something I wanted to pursue for the rest of my life. Um, and then after playing jazz for a while, like the tone of the bass just seemed to click with me, and I was like, man. That's what I want to do right there. So I went from like jazz into started to play bass. Went from jazz to kind of like heavy metal and then rock and roll and everything in between. Played in a bunch of bands. Ended up with these guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Talk> about it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> First of all, what's up with the hat? <laughs> well, Johnny also has balls attracted to his face. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm a, I'm a special kind of character here. I've always been the bad guy, the crazy kid. Um, I've loved music. Music ruled my life. My family wanted me to go to school, paid for my college. I didn't go. Uh, I've been DJing 10 years all over Michigan. I've done spring breaks, to parties, and everything. But I'm obsessed with music. That's just my life. I like everything to country, to rap, to rock, to death metal. I mean, there's hardly anything you'll find I don't like. But... I had to take the next step in my career now, you know, and uh, DJing was kind of at the peak. I've already done what most DJs can do, and what better than to team up with some guys that I've known and played with and hung out with, and I actually love what they do, and when we come together, it's even better, so naturally, I looked for a band and kind of found me, you know, and now I'm hanging yeah. out with Bob Evil Boys and just joined up with these guys, and hopefully we 
Rockford many years and end up being like the next like Aerosmith yes, or something, you know? Yes. <laughs> oh, one thing on basketball, when you're 60, you can still play in a band, you can still tour, have all the hot chicks. Yeah. Shaquille's going to have a hard time. Well, he's tall enough, he reaches up. Yeah, but yeah. He's it's still so not going to be able to play at 60, yeah. 70. He's still probably be able to beat me, though. <laughs> I'm sure he could take me. I asked Cliff Robinson one time what he thought, you know, like I was told him I wanted, I was going to try out for the NBA. He was trying to hit me playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think being a musician is funner. Oh, it definitely is. Yep. It definitely is. Uh, you're up. Yeah. Uh, myself, I actually uh, started off like an athlete like Lee himself. And, uh, but like I've always been a rocker. I had a sister that was like seven years older. Well, I still do actually. No, I had it. So. <laughs> <laughs> still around. But I remember like in uh, third or fourth grade, I remember getting sent home from school. My mom was like super mad because my sister sent me to school with an Iron Maiden hat, and it was like you know, <laughs> I didn't even know what it was at the time. I was, like, you know, it, you know, it was a cool thing. But um, yeah, I just grew up doing sports and stuff. And but. Um, I remember always before football practice too. That I, like I said, I've always been a rocker. I always had Metallica, like Sanitarium, going before the big football game. I always had it blaring in the locker room, dude. That was just my thing, you know. And then uh, once I graduated from high school, I just started playing, and you know, met up with Lee back on the scene, and then I'm here. I am sitting with these guys, the luckiest SOB that I've <laughs> ever be, I guess. Uh, one quick thing: the name Pop Evil. Where did that come from? Where did you guys come up with that? I think it's a great name, but the name, um. The name kind of is like, it's kind of ironic that you're asking us that after you just um, got us a little bit of individual story in all of us. Like we all kind of, as you can kind of tell, we all kind of all were outcasts in our own way, you know, and we all just were still kind of searching and trying to figure out who we were and, and uh, what our identity was and what we were going to do with our lives. I, as you can tell too, like, and some of us gave you stories, but our parents, like Donnie's to mine, to Matt's, to, to Dave's and to Tony's, our parents, I wouldn't necessarily say they didn't necessarily support us but they were always like ah, you know when are you gonna get a real job grow up let's not do this thing and, and and I'm sure that happens to most musicians you know it's not very likely that everyone could go tour with Tesla or come play at the myth and come to the country and play in music you write so I mean I understand it's a long shot but you know it, it, it was about whatever that mainstream normal thing was pop evil was above and below those so you know we again pop evil kind of ironic thing about it was it, it's kind of that name is, is like a way of life for us. It's not even a band name. It's not, and not knocking any other band name. It's not Creed or, or Led Zeppelin or something because there's total meaning, I'm sure, to those bands about that. But we just didn't want to be safe. We wanted a name that kind of slapped ourselves in the face to drive us, to motivate us when we got up in the morning. Look, it's pop evil. People aren't going to like us and they're not going to like our name. But, you know, I really wanted to separate at first, you know, and at an early stage in the band's career to just you're either with us or you're not. You know, I want to get those people out who are that superficial to just look at a name and shy away. Just like Dave said about Iron Maiden. You hear Iron Maiden, you see you hear God smack and people don't want to hear it before they even they judge it before you get. So at those at that stage, you know, I'm sure Sully might even say the same thing. It's like you you um you want to get those people who are aren't even there for the music anyways away <laughs> right off the beginning, right off your band. Right. So the people that do come in and do invite, it's that one percent of those pop people fans that we want to play for and that's what we'll make a living doing. Like you said too, you know, like pop evil is like, uh, it's it's how we live every day. You know, it's it's our way of life. Yeah. Uh, anything you guys want to say about this album or any upcoming albums or yeah, anything else? Definitely buy the album, buy the record, the new single, 155 November 4th, all over radio. Um, come out see us live though. I'm telling you, we don't believe in we don't believe in playing our songs and just standing up there playing our instruments. We perform our songs. And that's what Michigan's all about, you know, the land of Kid Rock and Eminem. We believe in we're performing show. our songs and putting on a show. So I'm telling you, the disc is amazing, but the live show is something you'll tell your kids about for generations to come. So I'm telling you that right now. Now. Any good Kid Rock or Eminem stories, or should I turn the camera off? <laughs> lots, but, lots, but turn them over. We'll tell you later. <laughs> all right, we're... Um, it's about a wrap. We're here with Pop Evil in Maplewood. Uh, show's about to begin. Uh, you're watching Backstage Pass, don't forget it. And these guys are rocking. Get their yeah. CD, go to popevil.com, check out the tour dates. Hey, come hang with us in VIP, we're waiting, there's yeah. plenty of room, all right? There's plenty, plenty of room. Plus seats. Only Woo. if you're hot, no yeah. fat girls allowed. <laughs> 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 fat chicks need love it too. Yes, yeah. they do. We get lonely after a while on the bus. You know? We'll love them. There's no balls. <laughs> no balls.